Hello everyone, welcome to my workshop. Welcome to my channel, Building Cool Stuff. My name is Branislav and it's time for a new build. So as you can see, we're building Sinanju. It's a great kit, it's an awesome, beautiful kit. But I'm aware that I'm a bit late with this. This was popular like two years ago, three years ago. Still, it's never too late to build a Gundam or a mobile suit. As always, we take the parts of the runner, use nippers, clean the parts, and I won't drag too much through this part. Once you have all the parts of the runners, and this is the way I'm doing it now, Every time, even the straight builds, pre-cut all the parts of the runners, separate them by colors at least. It helps with painting. And then, you know, assembly in the end. And, and I've seen in some Facebook groups that people ask, how do you do it? There is no way to make a mistake because all the parts are more or less different. No, all the parts are different, but like there are some similar ones. But if you pay attention to the manual, it's easy to put it all together. Uh, this is my compressor that I've bought and it's an awesome compressor with chrome tank. The only problem is, as you can see, once you take off those dehumidifiers, you cannot unscrew it completely because the way it was installed. Too close to the tank, so it's a big flaw. Once it's full of moist, you know, you, you can't just take it off and wipe it and have it ready to go on. These are all the red parts for Sinanju, all the same color, same shade of red. I did decide to go with the pre-shading and the chrome. Uh, I'm gonna do the candy coat with pre-shading. As you can see, all my gear is here, the humidity is perfect. These are my airbrushes and, you know, another question in the in the facebook groups the gunpla builder groups do i really need a high quality airbrush these are around 100 euros a piece and you do need them once you buy them you know why you spend the money you know the difference it took me more than two years maybe three years to get to these i've started off with very cheap very simple airbrushes but these are very good one is uh, Iwata, Iwata, the other one is uh, Mr. Hobby. So as always, primer as the first step of every paint job. I still don't know how to appreciate the yellow parts, because if you appreciate them with black and, and light gray combination as I always do with all the other colors this yellow tends to be kind of greenish because of the black underneath so this modulation doesn't really work for it if you know I would really appreciate an advice you could leave a comment comment you could leave a comment Always test your airbrush before you start painting, even with something as simple as, as uh, primering. Alright, so if you want to do a, a candy coat, you do the primer. It's black, but it can be anything. And then you do the glossy black. Glossy black is really important part, because the next step will be chrome paint silver chrome whatever you can get the the shinier the better so in order for that chrome to be really good to really stand out to to look chromey you need glossy black uh, base and now here's the trick here's the best part if you want to do the pre-shading basically uh, as if you did the modulation pre-shading for regular paint you will do the same with, with candy coat. So as you can see, I'm applying this silver only through the middle of the parts, leaving the edges and the corners 
still black, glossy black. So once I put the top coat with, with transparent red, it will still be glossy, it will still be candy coat. You will see, I, I was pretty psyched, I was pretty amazed how well it looked in the end. Of course, I did some tests with the spoons. By the way, this video have been done a long time ago, but my old granddaddy of a computer, old Republic of Gamers, Asus, uh, about eight years old computer, started dying off. So it's turning off, uh, initially it was turning off only when it renders from Premiere, now I started turning off even when I watch videos and do something simple. I tried cleaning and doing the pace change and everything, but it's still dying. So I bought a new one, that's why this video is so late and my channel was without new content for such a long time. I bought a Lenovo Legion Model 2022 and I'm super happy about it. So the glossy red, or uh, the, the clear red, the transparent red, I'm using Mr. Hobby. Almost all of these paints are Mr. Hobby, you can just stick to them, they're really convenient. Give it a nice, nice wet coat. Of course, be very careful. Pulling is a big problem and you can easily overdo it. So just go, like spray one side, then turn to the other side of the, of the part. While you're spraying the other side, the, the initial one is drying. It doesn't need to dry completely, but like layer by layer. And just try to, to make estimation, try to see yourself whether red is good and, and nice and, and well saturated. And also there is a problem with pre-shading, like it happens quite often, I, I'm not that experienced. Uh, once you're done with pre-shading and you do the, the color layer, you have multiple parts with slightly different shade. Like you've done, you've done a bit thicker coat on one part than on the other and it shows in the end. It's all right if you're doing weathering in the end, but if you're doing a clean build, then it's a bummer. You gotta find a way to paint these parts that don't fit on, on the alligator clips. You can put them on toothpicks, I have a lot of wooden skewers, those little little sticks for for barbecuing, right? Or you can put two-sided tape on some some piece of wood or, or whatever the base is and just stick them on it. If there is a side of your part that won't be painted, it makes it a whole lot easier. The biggest challenge would be to paint a sphere if it needs to be painted on all the sides. A very important part, in my opinion, is when you paint, you need to have a really good lighting above your booth. This one is not so great, so I often stop and look at it, and if I'm painting in daytime, and I'm usually not, I get the, the part closer to the window. Then you can see the, uh, what the modulation really is, uh, what the color looks like. Always clean your equipment. That's lesson number one for airbrushing. It's really important. All right, once you're done with these steps, like initial painting, you're gonna do the water slides.
I've ordered two separate sets of water slides for this particular kit. And both of them came, like two of them were the same and both of them were completely different from what Sinanju usually gets. I had no white stripes, those, those white stripes he has on, I think side skirts, some on, on the backpack as well. But I did get something like this, like this 10S, uh, whatever. So it was for Sinanju, but not for this kit. It was for Master Grade, but I don't know, there is a difference between Verka and OVA. Once again, I don't know everything. If you do, do explain. I don't think I'll be building another one anytime soon, but I would like to know. I didn't use that chemical for sticking the water slides better, even though you see it here on the desk. But I didn't use it because it kind of taints that perfectly nice and smooth finish. And I knew that I would do the top coat on top of them. I do the glossy coat in the end, so I didn't really need them to stick insanely well because, you know, they'll be fixed with that, with the top coat. I bought some alternative sets of water slides and I've used those. Eh, you know, I don't mind it not being 100% accurate. This makes it more my own. Speaking of creativity, shout out to the band Bullet for a Bad Man. They've provided music for this video. You can find them on Spotify, enjoy their music. I'll also leave a link in the description for you to follow. One of the most versatile tools of Gumpla building and painting is definitely a cotton bud. You can use it, like I go through them. I go through tens of them per build. Like I said before, once I was done with water slides, I sealed them all nicely with the glossy top coat. You can see here that I'm first just releasing the air from the airbrush, trying to dust off any, any particles that are stuck to the surface. Make that your habit. So once you're done painting one part, press and release some air, like that's highly compressed air, right? Release some air away from the part, because there can be a, a, a little bit of paint on your airbrush, and then just get close to the part and spray off all the dust before you start painting. It's really helpful. Once you get used to it, you don't even think about it. Once again, this is uh, Mr. Hobby paint, Mr. Hobby um, gloss. Mr. Hobby Clear Gloss, I don't know the number. And this is the inner frame. So many parts. I've never built anything that was this complex. I was really psyched. So, black primer. And then I went with Dark Iron from Mr. Hobby. Now that paint is wonderful, I didn't really use it the way it's supposed to be used. The way you use it, you spray it on, let it cure completely, and then take a cotton bud and just uh, polish it vigorously. It gives awesome results. But this time I just sprayed it on, that's it. I've seen in many forums that Master Grade Sinanju has a really weak waist joint and once I started building I could see why the, the peg is all hollow. So I ordered third-party 
replaceable peg. It's interesting, they, they made this peg really weak, but they also made a place where you can fit the replaceable peg, like there is a little hollow space underneath the peg. So I just drilled it out and put the metal part and it's really good, it's worth it. It was super cheap, so if you're building Sinanju, Master Grade Sinanju, think about it. This is good investment. All right, reverse wash. Reverse wash. Rever it's not my language. Reverse wash works like this. Primer. Uh, you can do the glossy black and do the golden on top of the whole part. These are lacquer paints. And once you're done, once they cure, you take enamel black and cover the whole part. The trick is you take enamel thinner and remove the black paint only in the parts where you want gold to show. Because the golden paint, gold paint underneath was lacquer based, the thinner will not damage it. And you will have like nice golden details. Sinanju is really a good example where this is so useful. So a little bit of, of uh, enamel thinner on the cotton bud, just nice and slow. And the best part is if you do make a mistake, and I did make mistakes, you can just take a little bit of this paint, as you can see in the metal plate right above there. Take a little bit of this paint and just fix your mistakes. If you're taking off too much of of the black just fix it especially if you plan to top coat it in the end and I did top coat it with clear gloss again works perfect just look at this this is so satisfying one of the reasons I've been thinking one of the reasons why I enjoy building Gunpla so much is because Everything is so straightforward. Like I've learned everything from everything, most of the things from YouTube. And you know, there, there are good people who are really eager to share their knowledge on forums. On there are a couple of Facebook groups that I'm I'm a member of. And you just follow the example. You know, you just follow what they tell you, and it works. It gives great results. All right, final assembly. You see the amount of parts here. This is another thing that I've recently started doing. Put all the parts one next to the other, examine the user manual and just go with it. Well, there was a cat. Time for you to click like. Now oh, there's another cat, <laughs> give it two likes. No, 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 don't double click that like button, please. Uh, these heat pipes or whatever they are, the, these Zaku beads, they kind of get off all the time this this little thingy unhooks so i put a little bit of super glue and i glued it in place you gotta be super careful with super glue because it can melt the paint off so easily so easily so just be super careful with it and ladies and gentlemen here we go the final build This was a super satisfying build. Guys, I was so psyched about this. I've also separated all the fingers, as you can see, because just like Zaku 2.0, he has like three fingers joined together, then index finger is uh, independent and the thumb. But it's made in a way so you can easily cut them off and, and like separate them from one another and it all works like a charm. You see something like that and all you want to do is like get it into different poses and 
it's so awesome with all the gimmicks and everything. But then you start posing it, really, and it's not really as cool. What I'm trying to say is, like, parts start falling off, it's kind of finicky, kind of wobbly, so you get fed up with it pretty fast. But then again, I, I don't build Gunpla to play with them. I build them to enjoy the build. The build is the main goal. There we go! Thanks for staying with me till the end of the video. Click a like, subscribe to my channel if you have nothing better to do. There are many more builds to come. Thanks for watching. See you in the next build.